The following video is the installation of the D-Lab K1 push-to-talk system into the Johnson Viking 2. It's Terry here in D-Lab. Yep, it's another push-to-talk video. I know that you guys are probably getting tired of these, but I'm trying to show how the system can go on all types of transmitters. Today we're going to feature simple installation into the Johnson Viking 2 transmitter. Here we go. So you've got your big beautiful Johnson Viking 2 transmitter and you want to install push to talk and you want to look neat like it belonged on that transmitter, okay? Rather than flipping this old plate switch every time you want to talk and then back to receive, wouldn't it be nice to just be able to squeeze the old microphonium and key the transmitter? Well, it can easily be done, okay? But the first thing you need to decide is what are you going to replace this old mono audio jack input with that has the pins necessary for the push to talk on your microphone? So Johnson had this nice two pin jack. Okay, you see these on the Rangers and the Valiants. The problem is they're made by Amphenol and they're very costly. So good luck finding one of those. But there are some options. You can also install a typical four pin CB type input jack, okay? They make these in a four and then the five pin type are for like Cobra radios. But to install this type or the Johnson two pin, you have to drill this thing out, okay? So it does require a slight modification to the front panel. You could also use one of these TRS type jacks. This is a Switchcraft jack. It's actually for like stereo connections. So you've got two connections and your ground. So in this case, you'd have push to talk on one, audio on the other, and then ground. And this one does not require any drilling of that front panel. As I stated earlier, you can remove the stock jack and one of the TRS style will go in its place fairly easy and there's enough threads poking out where you can get the nut on there and you're off and running without having to pull the front panel. But there is one issue that I want you to be aware of is that between the chassis and the front panel there's a gap here. Okay, It's a little over an eighth of an inch. So you may find that when you install that TRS jack that you might not be able to tighten it because this metal plate is going to try to pull in to the chassis. And I've seen guys actually bow in their front panels here and damage them by over tightening this nut. Okay? Just something to be aware of. Now the person that owns this radio does not want that style jack. He wants the four pin jack. So as you can see, diameter wise, it ain't going to make it. So we're going to have to drill this out. And the only way you can do it, you guessed it, pull the front panel. So I'm sure you're thinking, man, that's a lot of work to pull that whole front panel just to put in a mic jack. But there is a hidden bonus here, all right? First off, yes, you have to remove all the knobs. There's some nuts behind these knobs you have to take off. There's about five screws down the left and the right side on the inside of the chassis. You unscrew those. And then this panel will come forward and she'll drop right off. All right. So you get in there, you put in your jack. But at that point, guess what? You've got access to the front side of all these controls, things that you can't see. It's a great time to clean and lube everything up so that when you're done, this thing will be better than it's ever been. So the knobs are off. Wine of the night. This Han cab, listen to Little Kansas Left Overture. Alright, to save damage to your meter select switch and the terminal board, of course, on the back of the meter, you're going to have to unsolder the two wires, okay? There's just a black and a red wire. They come off pretty easy. This one is extremely tight. I'm probably going to replace that one. But you're going to have to take these off. Don't forget, because if you pull the front panel and these are still connected, yeah, 
would not be good. Front panel is ready to remove. I've got all the hardware off, the screws from the inside, all the nuts from the controls. Obviously the knobs are out of the way and the leads to the meter have been unsoldered. Okay. So before I pull the front panel, I wanted to point out a couple things. Number one, whoever owned this really loved this Viking II because they took the time to clean and wax the front panel. You can see remnants of the wax that was hidden under the skirts of the controls. The other thing is, is you see these two switches? Look what happens when I move them. They shouldn't do that. These switches should have had nuts that locked them into the sub chassis. They're obviously missing. So the question is, is did they replace these by pulling the front panel? Or did they somehow get them out from the rear and leave the hardware trapped in the chassis. Let's find out. All right, so I'm having issues getting the front panel off because there's a slight burr on the shaft. So I'm gonna have to take something and tap that shaft in. Everything else is cleared, but you know how Murphy's Law is. All right, I finally got it. A little bit of manipulation there. You can see a little bit of dust in there. But yeah, those nuts are just gone. Very strange. So we're going to put new ones in there before I put the front panel back on. If you don't like the sight of metal shavings, now would be a good time to close your eyes. So I'm going to take the stepper bit. We're going to open up the mic jack to the diameter required to get this jack installed. So here we go. So the hole's been opened up now to accommodate the new jack. I'll get the nut on the back of that. But the next thing we have to contend with is the chassis. So this hole in the chassis also has to be opened up. Now yes, you could take a stepper bit if you wish, or you can use a little green leaf punch. And that's what I like to do. So I'm going to put the punch in here. And I'm going to open that hole up because you need to be able to get in there to access the back of that jack to do the wiring. So you don't want it tight. All right, so this is a one inch Greenlee punch. All right. And you have the diameter of this bolt that goes through the hole and it matches right up with the original hole in the Viking 2's chassis, which is nice. So put that guy in there. Put my wrench on there, punch the hole, and that'll give me plenty of clearance to wire up the new mic jack. Almost through. There it is. So there's the new mic jack loosely installed on the front panel. I highly recommend that you use a three quarter inch socket to tighten this up. Don't get in there along those pliers and butcher the thing up, okay? Use the right tool, because this is the only time that you want to install this. All right, so the mic jack is in. At this point, you want to solder a ground runner on pin two, okay? Because pin two, this could be your ground connection, all right? And you'll see here in a minute why I soldered that on at this point. So as I stated earlier, you sure don't want to replace this mic jack twice because of what's involved to get that front panel off. So what is the weak link? That nut, okay? Over time, it's going to try to loosen up. So how do we stop that from happening? I'll give you one clue. And here it is. Back, yep, relax. it's Snozzeramus. We are going to solder that Why nut and the ground wire from pin 2 direct to yeah. the chassis. Problem solved. <laughs> Before we put the front panel back on, as promised, I have new meter leads and I installed 
some jam nuts on those switches. Everything's cleaned and lubed. Time to put her back together. Hard parts out of the way. Here's the back side of the new mic jack. You can see you have plenty of clearance to do the wiring. Next step, we have to put the K1 module down here on the chassis and start the wiring. So it's time to install the D-Lab K1 module. It's actually going to stick right here underneath the shaft of the 160 meter in-out control. She's in place. This black and green wire is the filament supply. And we're going to go right over here to the clamper tube, which is a 6AQ5. So one lead here with the green wires is the filament. And then you have a ground that is shared off of the 807 sockets. The blue wire is your push to talk line, which will go to our newly installed mic jack. And then you have the two sets of wires, the green white and the red black, which will go in parallel across the plate switch. So the wiring on this kit into the Johnson Viking 2 is very basic, just like the Heathkit DX100. It simply wires in parallel across the existing plate switch. So you still get the functionality of the existing plate switch and now you've got push to talk. Not as complicated as the DX60 where you had to splice into existing wiring. The push to talk in the Viking 2 goes right in and you're ready to go. So I've got the kit installed. We're ready to test the Viking 2 with my big old Elvis style a static 77 microphone on. So let's go to the radio. We'll see how the push to talk acts. See if it's got modulation. All right, so we got the Viking 2 set on 40 meter band right now. There's my oscillator current, buffer, grid, which you can peak with a buffer. She's a little high, bring it back down or so. Go to plate, flippity doo da. Make sure she's dipped. She is, so I'm getting a little over 100 watts output. Now we're going to do modulation into phone position. There's my resting modulator current. Looks good. Time for push to talk with the Aesthetic 77. I can key the radio. Let's see if we've got some modulation. Oh yeah, and I can hear myself coming out of the tubes. That's always a good sign. Now this is a unamplified microphone. So you can see if you put a power mic in this thing, it'd probably go nuts. But it's working. So we just added some cool functionality to the Johnson Viking 2. You can still key it up the stock way, flipping on the old bat handle plate switch, or now you can kick back in your easy chair, key the old microphone, and talk away. And when you're done, boom, kills the plate voltage. This is a really nice addition to the Johnson Viking 2, and the little K1 relay makes installation a piece of cake. Well, a couple glasses of wine later, the Johnson Viking 2 has some new features that you would find in a modern transmitter. If you have a transmitter in mind that you think could benefit from the push-to-talk module, drop me a line. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. We'll see you again.